Hello and welcome to the third instalment of Telltale's The Walking Dead series, A New Frontier. Now this video is part of a series looking back on the whole series of The Walking Dead by Telltale. Now this game isn't directly related to the previous one as it focuses on entirely new characters and a new story. However, Clementine, our hero from the previous two games, does still feature so it is important that you know what happens in the previous games. And on on that note, you can watch my recap video of The Walking Dead Season 2 by clicking up here and find my recap of the first game on my channel. Such is the nature of this game, the narrative is slightly defined by the decisions that you make. These only normally cause slight changes as the game is still planned to end a certain way, but I'll try and highlight when such decisions exist. If you do like this video, then I just ask that you hit subscribe. It takes me a lot of time to make these recaps and a few extra subscribers at the end of it is a nice reward. Let's begin. The game opens with a pre-outbreak scene as we park for Clementine and Lee's story for now and join a new character, Javier, who is running to his parents' house, having been told that his father is sadly dying. When arriving, we're told that dear old dad has indeed sadly died before being berated by his brother, David, who immediately gives off uber dickhead energy. After a scuffle, Kate, David's wife, arrives and consoles Javi. Now, I don't claim to be an expert in reading women, hence why I spend my time playing and talking about video games, but I do reckon that, you know, Kate wants a bit of Javier. Inside, we attempt to comfort our grieving mother, only to be slapped in the face, not our night tonight. Moments later, Mariana, David's daughter and Javier's niece, fills up a cup of water and takes it to the bedroom where our father's body is laying. Javier's mother explains that Mariana doesn't need to do that anymore before the young girl replies, No, Yaya. People's awake. And I think shit, what on earth could be happening in this zombie apocalypse game? Yep, you guessed it, Papa isn't a rolling stone, he's a zombie. He attacks this dude who is so unimportant to the story that I forget his name, and then is restrained by Javi and David. Silly old mama decides to stroke Papa's face and, yeah, gets bitten, silly old bat. Eventually, Javi has to make the difficult decision to kill his father, saving David's life in the process. David takes off to the hospital with mother while Javi follows with Kate, unnamed dude, and David's children, Mariana and Gabe. Javi then notices that unnamed dude is bitten. The scene ends. Flashing forward to the modern day, Javier is still on the road with Kate, Gabe and Mariana, suggesting that they never managed to reunite with David or his mother. Unnamed dude is unsurprisingly not with us. Rest in peace, brother. Your name will never be forgotten. When trying to siphon gas from a junkyard, Javi is held at gunpoint by bandits who claim the gas is theirs. Witnessing this, Kate, Gabe and Mariana hide but are eventually found, causing Javi to defend them. Javier is knocked out and wakes up in captivity, being transferred somewhere by truck. In a slice of good fortune, a nearby tree falls, causing the truck to crash, allowing Javi time to escape. We're given the option to shoot our captor or let him go. Should you let him go like I did, he will risk appear later in the story and recall this encounter within dialogue. Moments later, we are again held at gunpoint, but I soon recognize a familiar voice. And then, with a tear in my eye, I see our girl, Clementine, still surviving and still heeding Lee's advice and still cold as ice. Clementine reveals that she caused the tree to fall before allowing Javi to leave. However, Javier expresses his need for help, explaining that he needs to find his family. Clem agrees to lead Javier to where he needs to go and where he last saw them, but in return for his van. Clementine also explains that a huge herd has occupied that area and that they should wait until morning. The duo head to a nearby settlement which Clementine has stayed in before called Prescott. Narrowly surviving the journey with Clementine's bullets not firing, they are saved at the gate by a man named Trip. Later that night inside Prescott, Clementine gets into an argument with the man who sold her the misfiring bullets. However, this time they don't misfire and Clementine kills the man, which is kind of like a post-apocalyptic equivalent of getting a refund. 
Because of this, Clementine and Javi, by association, are thrown into a jail cell. Later that night, a lady named Eleanor treats Javi's wounds that he has sustained during the aftermath. After some casual flirting, Trip arrives and tells Javi that he will take him to try and find his family in the morning. However, Eleanor explains that that could be too late and offers to try and sneak Javier out of his cell. We have the option to sneak out with Eleanor or to wait until the morning. I, realising pretty easily that Trip is, you know, pretty handy in a fight, decided to go with him in the morning. This choice is very minor and doesn't change the story too much. While the duo sleep, we see a flashback to Clementine and AJ, who you may remember as a baby in the last game. The duo are seemingly living a pretty safe life in a settlement before it is attacked and they are forced to flee. Clementine is grazed by a bullet to the cheek, the cause of her modern day scar. They narrowly escape with their lives. True to his word, Trip takes Javi back to the junkyard along with Clementine. We find Mariana and after killing some walkers, reunite with Kate and Gabe who were sheltering in a nearby truck. However, as I remind you a lot in this series, Telltale are soulless story writers that never allow us to be happy and... Mariana meets her maker and the gang are forced to fight back the attackers. Before fleeing, Kate decides that they can't leave Mariana's body, which, to be fair, is pretty stupid, and naturally, she is shot trying to reach it. The episode ends. Trip takes Gabe and Kate back to Prescott and Javier and Clementine manage to fend off the remaining attackers and bury Mariana. Upon finding one of the attackers' bodies, Javi notices a strange mark on his neck. Clem recognises it and reveals that she has ran into this group of people before. They call themselves the New Frontier. And I'm like, that's the name of the game. Back at Prescott, Kate is stable, but still in a bad way. During a heart-to-heart -heart with Gabe about the loss of his sister, the New Frontier arrive at Prescott's gates. The group, led by a man named Badger and Max, demand Harvey come with them as punishment for killing some of their men earlier. They reveal they have a hostage called Francine, who is the wife of Prescott resident Conrad. We're given the option to fire or surrender ourselves. I chose the latter. No matter what you choose, Clementine fires and Francine is killed. The New Frontier rammed the gates, releasing walkers into Prescott before flooding it with tear gas. The settlement is overran with most residents dying. Trip, Eleanor, Gabe, Kate, Harvey, Clementine and Conrad all managed to escape. The new plan is to head to another settlement called Richmond. As Harvey and co fight off some walkers, Eleanor and Kate drive on, fearing for Kate's health as she worsens. Harvey, for the 300th time in this game, finds himself held at gunpoint. The man is revealed to be Jesus no, not that one, but that one from the Walking Dead comics and TV show. Jesus is every bit as badass in this as he is in those, and we soon learn he's a pretty good guy. He reveals that he is on his way to Richmond, but is seeking his friends who have been missing since the New Frontier took the settlement over. Realising they've just sent Kate and Eleanor into the hands of the very group they were running from, the group panics. Meanwhile, Clementine has another flashback. We see her and AJ sheltering from walkers, presumably after the events of the first flashback. Another survivor then runs into us. She is revealed to be Ava and explains that she is with a group called The New Frontier. And I'm like, no, Clem, they're the baddies. Back in the modern day, while passing through a railway tunnel, Clem confides in Javi and reveals her true link with The New Frontier. I was... I was one of them. Clementine also explains that she can't go back there and will be going her own way. Sadly, this conversation wasn't as private as Clem thought and Conrad overheard and holds Clem at gunpoint. Conrad plans to hand over Clem to the New Frontier in return for Eleanor and Kate, which Harvey refuses. Conrad attempts to use Gabe as further motivation, a fatal mistake. Holy shit! There is an option beforehand to agree with Conrad's plan and turn Clementine over. Only 10% of gamers chose this and it leads to Clementine's new frontier past being revealed to the rest of the group, but ultimately doesn't affect the story too much. After Conrad's shooting, Clementine decides to leave on her own. After telling Trip and Jesus that Conrad was killed by walkers, the group stumbled upon Kate still in the car that Eleanor was driving. We arrive at the gates of the New Frontier and appeal for medical help for Kate. However, Max, our friend from earlier, denies us. Moments later, one of the leaders of the group arrives at the gates and are we all ready for a plot twist? It's David. David's alive and is part of the New Frontier. What? What? Hold up, oh, hold up, wait a minute. Wow. Ooh. Like with all cliffhangers, 
the episode ends. The episode picks up where it left off as David and his family reunite. He orders his soldiers to stand down and the group are allowed inside. Kate and Gabe go with David while the rest of the group are forced to go into quarantine, which is said to be procedure. David later takes us to see Kate and on the way, Harvey tells him of Mariana's death. David is visibly disturbed by the news but asks Harvey to keep it to himself, explaining that he runs the New Frontier alongside three other people and it would upset the politics. We visit Kate, who now, with medical attention, is on the mend. She expresses her concerns about the New Frontier to Harvey, suggesting that despite David, they should leave at first opportunity. We attend a council meeting with David and two of the other council heads, Joan and Clint. Max is brought in to address the tensions, which just fuel them, and we're given the option to tell them about Mariana's death. And I was like, yeah, fucking right, I will. They shot a girl in the face. Regardless of what you choose, Joan and Clint decide to not allow Javi into Richmond and the group are cast out. Kate, Gabe and Eleanor from earlier are allowed to stay. Outside the gates, Ava hands us a big bag of weapons upon the orders of David. Upon inspecting the bag further, they find a map hidden by David. Naturally, we follow it. On the way, Tripp and Harvey talk women and the big bruiser reveals he and Eleanor used to be together and clearly still wishes they were. Moments later, they are attacked by a herd of walkers and Clementine arrives just in time to save our dear old Javier. In another Clementine flashback, we discover AJ is unwell with some kind of infection. Dr. Lingard, the fourth head of the New Frontier, discovers Clementine and is clearly high. He says that AJ is a lost cause and no medicine will help him. Him, and by using any on him will just mean someone else will have to go without later on. We have the option to inject AJ with some meds. Either way, we are found by David and Ava. In a rage, David shuns us from the group, forcing us to go back out on our own. But furthermore, he takes AJ from us, stating that he is not well enough to travel. No! You monsters! Back in the modern day, the group arrive at David's destination, which is a warehouse, and David himself soon arrives. He and Clementine share a frosty reunion before Clementine asks if AJ suffered before dying. To which David replies, He lived, Clem. David explains that Dr. Lingard gave him to another family away from Richmond. Upon further inspecting the warehouse, the group finds supplies from Prescott and other camps, suggesting that David's team had been raiding other places for supplies, to which David claims to have no knowledge of. Soon, Lonnie, Max and Badger enter the warehouse with more supplies, suggesting that they have been operating beyond David's orders and raiding nearby settlements. Naturally, David confronts them, which leads to a gunfight. During the skirmish, Harvey kills Mariana's killer, Badger. We are given the option to finish him or to let him turn. I let him turn as that felt more of a just punishment for his crimes. The decision does play a role later on. With the fight over, Max claims that they wasn't acting without orders and that Joan was aware of their crimes. We can kill him or take him back to help us expose Joan's crimes. I chose the latter. It's worth noting at this point Jesus departs the group claiming his friends are probably already dead and he's going to head back to his old group. We sneak inside and reunite with Kate and Gabe while Trip finds Eleanor. Kate tries to convince us to ignore David's plan to expose Joan and just leave together without him. Purely thinking of his son Gabe who pleads with us and the fact you know he is still my brother I refuse Kate's advice. Either way both decisions lead to the next scene. With the rest of the group in hiding in David's house, Javi and David confront Joan and the council. Joan denies Javier's claims, but if the player chose to spare Max, he will confirm them. Had we killed Max, Lonnie, the third member of the group that managed to survive and escape earlier, will tell the truth instead. Joan admits the crimes, but claims they were necessary to keep her community alive, a notion that eventually Clint and Dr. Lingard agree with. David and Harvey are detained before being knocked out. The episode ends. Episode 4 begins with David and Harvey locked in a cell. Joan soon arrives and takes David away, forcing Harvey to escape the cell thanks to the help of Gabe. If you backed up Kate earlier and attempted to leave without David, she will be the one that saves you here. Reunited with the group, we spot a huge herd outside the gates of Richmond. Harvey is shocked, but you know, 
hides it well. We, alongside Ava, who out of loyalty for David helps us, plan to get into the armory ahead of a pretty inevitable fight. Javi and Gabe take on the responsibility and collect the guns. When leaving, the duo are forced to hide in a cupboard, but Gabe decides to play hero and Javi is stabbed in the shoulder. Stupid prick. Javier heads to the medical room and finds a passed out Lingard feeling the effects of another drug binge. Clementine is also in the room having arrived to try and find out the whereabouts of AJ. After discovering her looking for medical supplies, Clementine reveals that she has got her first period, to which Harvey can offer some advice. Clementine then offers to stitch Harvey's wound up, explaining that she has done this before on herself, a callback to the second game. With our wounds stitched up, Dr. Lingard wakes up and offers to tell Clementine of AJ's whereabouts if Harvey agrees to inject him with a lethal dose of drugs, claiming that he no longer wants to live. We're given the choice as Clementine pleads with us to take the deal. I say, All right, I'll do it and killed Lingard, who, when dying, reveals that he gave AJ to a ranch called the McCarroll Ranch. If you refuse, Lingard is left alone, and Clem doesn't learn of AJ's location. The group hatch a plan to rescue David and escape via a fortified truck which is kept nearby. After becoming frustrated that Javier won't let him come along on the rescue mission, Gabe throws a tantrum and exposes the truth about Conrad, much to Tripp's shock. Once again, stupid little prick. After getting the truck, Kate and Harvey share a moment in which she reveals her love for him. We as Harvey can respond in the same way or reject her and I thought Kate was fine so I said let's go for it. We gotta try right? And the duo finally share a kiss. How lovely. But don't forget, this is a telltale game and they forbid us to have too much happiness for too long. Ava soon radios in and tells us that Joan is planning to hang David in a public execution. Javier, Clem and Gabe head to the town square. When there, they find the corpse of Lingard and Badger, which Joan uses as examples of the crimes that David has committed. If we killed Max or Lonnie too, they appear here as well. Joan spots Javier and reveals that Eleanor told her of their plan, snaky bitch, and then marches out Trip and Ava. Joan then forces Harvey to choose one person to save. The other person will die. Whoever you choose to save, Joan will kill, basically betraying your choice and going against your wishes. I admit this is my second playthrough, so I knew what was going to happen, so I chose to save Trip because I preferred Ava. Trip dies and Eleanor cries out, and I'm like, well, this is basically on you, isn't it, you snaky bitch? Disturbed by her actions, Clint steps in and offers Harvey the chance of exile, allowing him and David and co to leave but never return to Richmond. We can take the deal or attempt to shoot Joan. I chose the deal and Clint frees David. However, David being David then switches and holds Clint at gunpoint, claiming to not trust the deal. A few moments later, Clint gets free, which leads to a huge shootout in the square. If you choose to shoot Joan, Joan will die and the same scene plays out. If not, Joan will escape during the fight. Attempting to help, Kate arrives but crashes the truck. Clementine says, Javi, you've got to get over there before- And Javier thinks, before what? Kate! The next episode starts with a flashback to Javier and his dad. His father makes him promise to always be a good brother to David, a promise which will come to surface later in this episode. Snapping back to the modern day, the crash and explosion allows the herd of walkers into Richmond. Javier desperately tries to help Kate, but finds the truck empty. However, we soon find Kate miraculously unharmed, which I'll be honest, makes no fucking sense. She exchanges an emotional hug with Harvey instead of her husband, which noticeably pisses him off. Naturally, we're blamed by a lot of the survivors in Richmond for the injuries and deaths sustained in the gunfight and the Walker invasion. Remember that guy in episode one that we let live? Well, Javi attempts to save his life by cutting off his bitten arm, a trend which has appeared in every game so far in this series and in keeping with this trend doesn't work and the man basically bleeds to death. Not helping our popularity, his wife then holds us at gunpoint before David brutally breaks her arm, perhaps giving us a look inside his mental state. Next on this week's episode of David is a Nut Job, he stands on the edge of the tallest building in Richmond and is like, Stand with me. And you know me, never want to turn down a good time, so I jump up there with him. The two brothers have a heart to heart and David explains how he was built for this world because he is a soldier and how he wishes he had more heart and empathy like Harvey. The group managed to escape Richmond with Eleanor staying behind to treat the wounded, but you know, fuck that snaky bitch. When crossing a particularly tight gap, Ava or Trip, depending on your choice, falls and dies. The gang attempt to find a vehicle big enough to clear the walkers out of Richmond, but David disagrees, claiming 
claiming they should leave together and never return. The others disagree, unable to leave the survivors of Richmond at the peril of the walkers. Gabe, however, adding to the ever-growing list of reasons to hate him, takes David's side and agrees to leave with him. Kate refuses to go with David and slaps him. Go on, girl. Officially breaking up with him in the process. I am done with you. To improve David's already deteriorating mental health further, she then decides now is a good time to reveal her new boyfriend, Harvey. David unsurprisingly attacks Javi and we're given several chances to fight back or we can remain neutral refusing to fight him and honouring the promise we made to our father in the earlier flashback. However, after a while I kind of thought, well, fuck you dad and fought back. To which we're told on screen, we have broken our promise. Clementine then gets involved and holds David at gunpoint. The incoming walkers give David a distraction and he and Gabe take one of the cars and manage to leave. Kate and Clem plan to split up with Clementine going after David and Gabe while well, Kate attempts to save Richmond. Harvey is given the option of who to accompany. Purely as I knew Clementine would be absolutely fine on her own, I went with Kate. That choice is the most important choice in the game as it defines which of four endings we get. With my choice, Harvey and Kate arrive in Richmond and find Jesus, who has brought some of his group along. With his help, they manage to kill the walkers and save Richmond. Clementine later arrives with Gabe and tells Harvey that David has died, having been bitten and then killed by Gabe. Together, Harvey and Kate visit the site where David dies and Kate removes his dog tags and buries them in the way a soldier would have wanted. If you went after Gabe, Kate will die trying to save Richmond on her own. Jesus will later help us clear it, in which we then find Kate as a walker. David will either die in Harvey's arms or be saved, depending on further choices. Either way, a few days after the end events, Jesus tells Harvey that he should be the new leader of Richmond, an offer we can accept or refuse. Clementine then reveals that she is leaving to find AJ. Before doing so, she asks Javier to cut her hair, which is reminiscent of when Lee did it in the first game. And Clementine sets off to find AJ, with her story set to continue. And it does so in the final game of this series, which I will be making a video for. When it's done, it'll appear right here. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you can, please do hit subscribe. And if you have any questions about this game or anything at all, really, let me know in the comments.